Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of We Can't Stop Snapping Bread. Ooh, this season is just hot on the rollout team, Teddy. Number 15, when we crested infinite, we might be able to share our deck in a minute. But Brad, we have a really fun game for you to play. Okay. Gilgamesh or Gilgameh? Ah, see. Uh, how we feeling on this on this new title card? No idea. Haven't played with him yet. Ooh, well, you've seen him. You've seen the gameplay. What are, yeah. are you interested? Does he, does he feel like I mean, he's going to make So here's the thing. We predicted he'd be a very powerful card, and I think that is still true. Yeah. I just think the decks he goes in are kind of mid. The shells are not popping, and I think also people are a little in the weeds with this Thanos Zoo. We have a big Thanos change off the patch, which is really the only change we got in the patch. We should touch on that a little bit as well. It's right. not hitting a sweet spot for me at the moment, but we also have... Athena or D Athena? Oh, I think she's awful. What? I think she's awful. No way. I don't like her. I I'm think going... she's super mid. Um, I think she is the easiest skip in months. You actually pulling my leg on this one, or are we? No, uh, I think she's super easy on to opposite skip. Opposite hands, heads of the coin. Do not, do I'm going. Like I'm going S. My um. My infinite deck had her. I cut Gilgamesh, and uh, she rocks. She rocks people's socks off. Basically, it's your uh, it's your fabled rule of three, Brad. In the Cannonball Pro X deck, I now have three scalers, which is Angela, Thena, and Havoc. And that uh, that Thena is doing some magic for me, man. Is that let me let me ask you this then? Is it really her, or is she a symptom of the current meta we're in where everyone's playing Professor X? No, it's 100% the fact that she can also get discounted by Renslayer. Oh my gosh, why did they think yeah. that was okay? There's that too. <laughs> now, I think that she will be, like, she's at such a low cost, right? At, at a two-cost price point, she can work in a lot of different lists. Uh, right. But really, the fact that you can have a scaler hidden underneath Pro X is part of what makes it so fantastic. Or any kind of lockdown deck in general, I think is going to really feed off of what she can bring. Yeah, she's kind of like how um, before she came out, you could do like a turn five Professor X Havoc in a lane kind of thing. And be yeah, like, so well, I that do that if I, if I need to as well, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then she counts herself. Um, yep. So she matches what Havoc does on that turn. He comes down. And gives you the full energy on the uh, following turn. So yes, yeah. um, again, I, I think she has some play to her. I think you know, in certain decks where she fits to where you're playing constantly, a couple of cards at a time, which there are decks like that, she will be playable in that. But really, I do think that she is again more so a symptom of the meta she's in, as opposed to because, uh, like, I, I don't think she'd be nearly as playable if. Uh, if this professor X deck wasn't a thing right now. Um, I mean, because, maybe. Well, because think about it. Like time. if, if someone else was being played, all your yeah. scalers would kind of take. So let me backtrack. When you think of countering decks like professor X, right. Yeah. Or decks that are like in the top of the meta. What are you thinking of in terms of like deck construction? Like what key card are you trying to think of that? Like you want to just counter them. Like, what are you trying to bring? Up against this Pro X deck, I want to play it myself. Honestly, I will play Loki into it as well and do okay. And then, I don't know. I mean, it's just like the deck is so solid overall. When it's hitting the Professor X cannonball, it's a nightmare. Um, what cards but, are absent but, right now? Wait, it's Shang and Shadow King, right? It's really hard when right. Professor X can cover them. Exactly. Or the yeah. fact that most of that deck is just underneath uh Shang Chi and then Shadow. Yeah, or just like, barely, and it's like maybe right. Angela gets there, maybe Thena gets there. Right. But then that that final turn guess is like weird, and there aren't too many other decks that allow you to just run with the the Shang. And then Shadow King Shadow probably King should is, be there. Shadow King should be played more. However, if you're bringing Shadow King to specifically attack what the Professor X is doing, you're bringing the wrong card. Yeah. Right. So, like, again, that's that's part of the symptom. It's like, yes, Shadow King would be great against Sage, against Athena, against Angela. But then it's like, okay, 
either they get Professor X on top of it before you can play your Shadow King, which you want to play on turn six and stuff like that a lot of time anyway. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because if you tempo Shadow King against Athena, then she can yeah, she goes back down to one, but she probably only grew once anyway. And right. you can easily get easier get her back up to four again post Shadow King, which could be enough. Like a- exactly. So that that bait of like when do you use him? He can still like honestly one reset on Athena, then Shadow King represented two five. Like that's good. Mm-hmm. But you want more out of him. Correct. And so then you have to hold him and then they can trap you because they can even play Pro X on four. And then once the Pro X is down, then they get the this the the free reign of scaling for those next five and six. So that's where things just get they get wild with that deck. And if Havoc is there, he's doing the exact same thing. If Angela is there, they could even, you know, they they get a lot of tempo in that lane. So the deck is super scary. I feel like Thena could transition and still play well in some of the silky move decks. Or anything that's using like um, Kitty and Hope, so yeah, I think I, she I has more range. But right now, is this this meta is great for her? <laughs> I agree with I agree with that, and that's exactly yeah. why I'm saying she won't be as good uh, going into those types of metas because if Silky Smooth is one of the top lists, or things of that variety, a lot of small like tempo-y stuff like Angela and Sage and her. Shadow King is definitely eating and Shang-Chi goes back into the fold just because you're more likely to scale them to the uh, reach of Shang-Chi in addition of how to typically decks want to beat the little small things that like, scale a lot. They bring big things themselves. So yeah. Shang-Chi will then just have a ripple effect of being in the meta. I, I look Athena's fine. I find her boring and I find her kind of just okay and not a not a must have by any stretch of the imagination. Ah, you bite me deep. I'm in love. I think that she is definitely a must buy. Rose tin is goggles, my friend. You uh, if just you want to be able right to hit infinite right now. You grab her. She'll, she'll get you there, man. It's, it's wild. Lockdown with Dina. Let's go. Sign me up. I bane my thumbnail. I'm in my thumbnail and everything. I'm loving it. 76.3% win rate with this cannonball deck. Oh my Lord. It's good. Team Teddy was, was eating good. All right, well, let's get this out of the way. Uh, we had a, a whole conundrum occur over the weekend. Oh, gosh. Um, there was the Dealing with Demons uh, Gambit variant uh, issue with the uh, patch. Yep. Basically, long story short, is uh, the artist that made the art for Dealing with Demons Gambit variant had some troubled stuff in their uh, their work with Marvel, which actually led to them being fired by Marvel as an artist. And second dinner made a very big mistake by not vetting correctly. You're having that vetting process be a bit more thorough. Uh, in my opinion, a nuclear level mess up by them because all it takes Teddy is a Google search of the artist's name. Mm. And it's the fourth, sixth and seventh result of that search. After you get past that person's like uh, Twitter, uh, Instagram, Wikipedia right, page yeah, and stuff yeah. is the entire thing they did <laughs> of injecting anti-Semitic, anti-Christian uh, Easter eggs into X-Men comics, essentially, which when X-Men comics and a lot of Marvel comics in general, especially coming from two Jewish creators themselves, uh, really being a allegory to anti-bigotry and oppression and things like that, injecting that kind of hate into stuff is a, a no-go. So of course, Second Dinner made, the, I think, the appropriate decision uh, to say, We don't want that in the game or anything representing this person. So we removed it. However, they removed it, swapped it with a different variant. A lot of people were upset because it's like it was just a little thing in the patch notes that didn't actually say explicitly what happened. All they said is thanks for bringing it to our attention. We've addressed it. Essentially is what they said. It was handling. It was weird. Right. Because it's also one of those things like if they make a bigger deal about it, then it's like still drawing attention to mm-hmm. what's going on. But you have to be upfront and transparent with what's going on. Yeah. And they weren't. Um, and then they kind of said, okay, here's sorry. Here's 1200 gold to replace that variant. People got upset again, being like, this isn't enough or whatever, because that bundle was $100. This was um, the whales. Yes. And 
then they release the statement uh pretty much if you're seeing on screen uh you've been able to read it this entire time if not basically long story short it's like they're saying thank you for the feedback here's eight thousand gold for everyone so long story short teddy that hundred dollars if you bought that bundle got you a cool shadow king variant a still pretty okay gambit variant it's just the uh wolverine looking at the uh picture one right but gambit uh still a fun variant uh 9200 gold because you got uh or shoot no i'm sorry it was 9200 plus the other 8000 so uh so it's 17200 17200 gold um so you got 17200 gold for 100 bucks 8000 credits couple cool variants avatars stuff like that when it all said and done um look Good job, Second Order, for doing the right thing by the community, I suppose. Um, I personally, when it happened, I was like, why would they give back full refunds or like yeah. this much gold? Because my thought was the variant wasn't the whole poll. The main thing I saw during the time where this was a spoiled and then released that everyone talked about this one was the value of the gold and the credits. I saw, and I'm not bullshitting you, Teddy, when I say this, virtually zero people talk about the Gambit variant when it came out. Right. That, doesn't, like, that was what that was that was not what they were talking about looking forward to, right? Right. Yeah. It wasn't like, oh, this is why you get it. They're like, the value right. is insane. Now, did the Gambit variant sway some people to like kind of push them over the edge of like saying, yeah, it's good value plus I like the variant? Of course. I'm not saying that's not true. Yeah, Absolutely I mean, was, that happens. But yeah. It's still, you got well over $100 in snap value, quotation marks. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know you had that one. I, I... Oh, nope, that doesn't a... work. There oh, there it is. Peace. Confetti. Peace, Peace and confetti. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. So, Second Dinner has, uh, has rolled this out. I do think that they do pretty well, like covering up or um, what? Running compensation. Compensation has always been good from second dinner. So mm-hmm. happy to see that from them. But Teddy, and, had I known that if I just spent $100, I would no, end up getting no, no. 17,200 no. gold. Where's my gold, Teddy? I'm a I'm a fan of the game and I support the game in other ways. You should have given no. this 8,000 gold to everybody. And for those of you who think I'm being serious, please leave. There's, there's people who are like that. I'm, I was the bystander who watched someone get wrecked in a car accident, but they survived and then their insurance paid out well. So what about me? Yeah. Whereas, uh, it's the trolley thing, right? Yeah. It would not be, it wouldn't be fair to the people behind me that got killed strapped to the train tracks to yeah. switch the tracks. Now they exactly. need to die. <laughs> the people in front, <laughs> they need to. <laughs> This says that I am a sociopath, but yes. Yeah. Balance uh, in the universe. Yeah. yeah. Secondary, good job. I, I, I think it was a, the, the outlash, out, the, uh, outlash was, um, a little overblown in my opinion. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Uh, look, I, I get it. I do. It's, uh, they, they, again, not defending secondary, they fucked up. They made a mistake, but they fixed it. Hooray. All right, cool. Let's do the cool things now. Let's talk about the one balance change that occurred for this patch. So uh, I awesome. like the direction it's going, trying to make Thanos a Thanos-centered mm-hmm. deck. I just... Do you like this one? I feel like... It's the not stones, there yet. It's bad. Yeah. I feel like the stones are not doing enough for him yet. <clears throat> Correct. To make me really worried about this Thanos that's going to come hunting me towards the end game. Do you know what this uh, patch missed? What it updated it miss? every stone except for the one that I would argue is the most important to actually make Thanos playable. The power stone. Yeah. yeah. The power stone should either incrementally scale for Thank each you. other uh, that was, stone. That was mine. That's my suggestion. Or just make him absurdly powerful, like 30, 40 power. What if it, yeah, what if it made him like give power to adjacent locations or something? Mm, too yeah. much? Or what if it, yeah, I don't it's, know. This, this feels like there needs to be something that really wraps it all together. Maybe, maybe even a way that then he starts buffing the stones. I don't know. Yeah, I just, I just want to see him be like when he has all the stones down and power stone, he should be the biggest thing in Snap. Yeah. 
I think bigger than if not bigger than anything, he should be I like mean, what is... 30 power minimum. Because even yeah. then, that doesn't mean it's a playable deck. It just means you can work to assemble this Ultra or this uh, Voltron, so to speak, of like, oh, it's so big, but like you still got to win the other lanes, right? Exactly. I mean, there's even a world where you could say like, Thanos g- gains the condition, you win the Thanos lane regardless of points. You know, like something insane. Yeah. So I, I just I, I think it's on the right track. I like the rework. I like the idea of like making the stones and the Thanos deck actually care about the namesake card. Yeah. It's just we're not quite there yet. The space stone is a really cool change to be able to make it so easy. That like one's a the good Jeff. one. Removing Redstone the draw is good on its own. from reality stone feels weird. Like it's one thing that we've talked about for a while. Um and then just shifting that draw to the soul stone to give the soul stone draw is a little odd. It's like, what if they just, just let them all have draw at this point? Like, it's like, if you're going this direction where the stones are way worse on their own in a vacuum, because they're only buffing Thanos, I don't mind them all having draw. The problem of them all having draw before is because they all did something incredibly powerful that yeah. was just generically good. Yeah. It became the best in class ramp shell. And then you mm-hmm. can play big stuff with Thanos and do incredibly well because of Time Stone. Um, but now, but now you, you cannot. Can. Time Stone is only discounting Thanos. I wonder if you just play a game where you make the stones base power better. Like now they look like stat lines that could be one twos. Um, yeah. And that could be something for them. Maybe Mind Stone goes back to a one cost. There's still, there's so many levers. They talk about balancing levers, and Thanos has so many of them. They do a ton of different things. I mean, so, I with the space stone change, I actually might even like seeing Thanos go to a five cost, where then hmm. time stone would bring him in at four, because the idea of him coming in early, being able to move around, but also being indestructible, just makes it like feel like ah, you can play through Thanos more. But I don't yeah, know. I'm curious uh, with Soul Stone's change of him now just saying Thanos can't be discarded or destroyed. Yeah. Um, on the discarded part, does that mean he's untargetable? No, he is targetable. Like, I had Sokovia appear, and it did nothing to my hand because it chose to attack Thanos, but he couldn't okay. go. I I hope in the future they do an- give, like, an animation to that. So, like, where it, you know, right. like, the, uh, the, like, the, um, uh, like, the Shang-Chi or whatever, like, underneath, um... X one no what, what am I thinking of? There's a there's like a it glows red almost like a red like cancel effect and it does this little like shimmy like zzz. yeah like what what when does that occur? I was well, the can't it. if like they can't move right so Iron Fist pushes something against the wall and it's like a circle yes, line through that it. one yeah they should yeah. just add that to Thanos in your hand if it targets and <laughs> it can't be discarded. I thought we were gonna get the animation of like seeing Gomorrah fall off the cliff and it's like Soulstone <laughs> blocked it. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> Yeah, actually, it'd be cool if each one had an animation. Yeah. Maybe not Gamora falling off the cliff, but... <laughs> oh, come on. They do. They, like, glow when you put them from hand to board. Okay. It's something. It's it's sure... Yeah, it's something. Um, you had also something, though, Teddy, with this uh, this patch. Um, the first they thing changed the move? Over, the data oh, mine? Yeah, yeah the, the, the move I guess thing. We should say they changed okay. move. Yeah, okay, move real now. quick, real quick. Move happens first. Everything now, yeah. that happens in a turn, as far as the stack goes, is if you move something like Jeff, Nightcrawler, Vision, whatever, the first thing that occurs will be the move, and then everything will flip. This means it's easier to target and hit things uh, with a uh, Shang-Chi or whatever. Um, right. Also, Shadow King. Um, it does weird make Hercules nuances. and uh, Craven. Craven, that's what I was thinking of. Uh, Hercules okay, and Craven worse because you can't sequence them in a way where you play them and then ha- have them flip and see the card that moves to like kick yeah. out like before. That doesn't work anymore. Uh, yeah, it's just like. <clears throat> also, by the way, all of you were like leave it a second dinner to nerf one of the worst archetypes in the game. I don't think this was intended as a nerf. It's just intended as like, Hey, we want to make sure it's like easy for everyone to understand how this yeah, works listen, like, and it's consistent. It, 
it used to be that if you moved a card with an ongoing effect, the ongoing would turn off and then it wouldn't turn back on until that card had resolved in the stack of when it was moved. And so there was positions where like they would move a card and then you would shang that lane or throw some kind of control down, but the card was not registered as being there yet. And it was super weird and it wasn't intuitive. So yeah. this makes, I feel like this <clears throat> works. The, the visual of the card moving there always happened in the beginning. Now they're just making the effects of that card being at that location also happen when it moves there, which I, I like it. Right. Okay. And now so, maybe they can add some power to move or but the, the data mine we have I, okay, we have two cards who do move, but I don't think they're helping move decks. <laughs> no, I agree. Uh but the first thing is the new borders in this patch. Hot hot hot. Which are the cosmics, which are really cool. And uh I uh, I caved. Boom, baby. And, uh, I don't know why it got smaller when I clicked on it. I guess I'll just leave it there. Uh, yep. It looks really good. Super good. Uh, I don't I have just, one yet. <clears throat> I got three. I got Man Thing, Enchantress, and Shang Chi. Nice. So All got, greens. Uh, no, Shang Chi was orange. Okay. Uh, but the other ones are green. Uh, if you plan on getting these, <clears throat> uh, two things. They do show up in the uh, the spa, the market or whatever, the shop. Yeah, there's a cosmetic shop section. Right. So where usually you see like emotes and stuff, that's still there. But sometimes it will randomly show one of these at a discount of $750 instead of $900. And all that means is when you purchase from there and you click on your custom card, uh, when you go to borders, you'll have a list and you'll have like gold cosmic and a one next to it. And then you can yep. click it. And once you save, it'll be like, do you want to confirm this? You'll have no more gold cosmics to apply. That's right. how that works. So you get the discount and then you basically have like a, a, you know, a stocked put away border for use later, which is fine. I guess these are still too much. I still hate how they're priced. Uh, but I, uh, I like how they looked and I, I was so, I had, I had like 4,500 gold and I was so tired of saving this gold, waiting for stupid variants to show up in my shop that I wanted to yeah. finish albums. It's been months, Teddy, and they won't show up. And I'm like, I'm done. I don't care here. I'm just going to burn them on this. You know, it's also so been did. months, Brad, <clears throat> me waiting for a hood. Oh my gosh. We're on base art hood. Uh, hood looks very good with the red cosmic. Well, Some thanks. of them just look insane. Yeah, no, the, I love the cosmic border effects. I think this is kind of more what I wish the earlier release had been because some of the earlier ones were just so close to what was already in the game. And I was like, why did we bother? But these are great. So um, maybe second dinner, put like uh, one of these charges. Now that we have the charge system in the conquest shop. That would be pretty sick. Glad the free to play trickle of acquiring these. Also, uh, I don't know if you noticed, Teddy, but if you go into Snap right now and you go to a custom card, uh, suddenly mm -hmm. in the top left, your tokens show up. Token, token, tokens. So I wonder what they're planning on letting you buy with tokens and the or custom cards. Or if it's just going to be cards. blanket if they add more currencies. They always they want to show all currencies within shop environments. I don't but know. But it's not a shop. It's it's so if you click on a if you click on a card, but you and can then go buy things thing, not from the custom. Uh, well, you can buy like, the borders, just the borders. But then, why? Okay, yes, but why are they showing tokens? It doesn't show tokens anywhere they, else. Yeah, it's like I don't know, man. I'm just throwing out like a programming mumbo jumbo. I if guess it's a shop environment, so they show the currencies. That's like I don't know. I would love it if tokens could be uh, in there somehow, or like some, even if it's an extravagant exchange. You know, sign me up. Just give us more uses for tokens. I yeah, guess. exactly. All right. Uh, so we have the bot invasion. Bot invasion. Teddy, what is this? It looks like a mess. Uh, we're not <laughs> sure. It's a, it's a data mine. Um, so it looks like, uh, it could have either been an earlier version of leagues or a alternate room of leagues where you're also fighting bots and you can gain experience or an additional currency through this. Um, this is clearly still in the oven. We'll see, I guess. I mean, just you get a certain amount of XP per loss and win, and then you face bots. I, I, I don't know. It, I, I don't want game modes like this. I just want actual game modes. Right. 
PvE. <clears throat> I mean, if there was a PvE, I wouldn't want it to just be bots. I would want it to be some kind of like, you know, the tutorial is kind of cool. It's got some story elements to it. They could set up a puzzle match where, you know, the opponent, the bot has like a super deck or like they're starting with a innate advantage against you or some kind of status effect against all your cards, et cetera, et cetera. Um, that'd kind of be fun. as like, you know, once a, once a season, they roll that mm. for a week. But just playing more bots, no thank you. Uh, I don't know what this is. Is this no. tied to bot invasion? Oh, the image, yes. Okay. All right, then we have all the data mines, the fun stuff. The Hooray. fun stuff. <clears throat> Man. All right, so let's talk go about... release order? Yeah. Which would actually put us beginning with Hydra Bob. <laughs> all right, Hydra Bob's now going from a 2-4 after each turn, move it to another location if you're losing here. And then now as a... a uh, sorry, 2-5. Now it's a 1-4. After each turn, this moves if a player snapped, which is a really interesting mechanic. It is. More stuff happening on snap would actually be very cool. Moving, not super cool. Uh, Not super impactful. 1-4, also not super impactful. But, I mean, it's just like it's a stat line. The first of his kind. The first of his kind at a raw 1-4. Well, we had Martyr as a 1-4. True. But then she got buffed to a 1-5. So now we have a 1-4 again. Uh, And the move... Yeah, I'm I'm less excited now, actually, than the other Hydra Bob. Yeah. I think. I don't know. I thought the other one was kind of meh, meh too. They're both meh. But then again, he is Hydra Bob, so it's on point. What if he... uh... (laughs) <laughs> you be gain uh-huh. power gain power on snap that's cool yeah which like I actually snap. like adds to like the thought process for the opponent like yeah, well, i'm in a good position snap, to snap, hydra bob will but... get stronger mm. all right well now we officially know besides hydra bob we officially know what the season pass card hawkeye kate bishop does and we were pretty close. You say a 2-3 on reveal adds two arrows to your hand. So we got that part right, Teddy. Yes, we were on the money. She probably adds the, uh, the arrows. Yep. We were not even close to what the arrows do, though. Most so, of the arrows, we have <clears throat> no idea. Let's, let's so go through them. We, we, got... we should have. So in, in, in we should have been able to guess these because what we did is we tried to think of like really interesting things that don't exist already in the game, but we should have yeah. known better. Uh-huh. Secondary loves recycling stuff and right. they are doing things that are just other cards. For example, the acid arrow is just straight up a goblin. It's a one negative two and it switched sides. I like this goblin though. Man, one negative two. That's kind of fun. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty decent stat. Uh, then you have basic arrow, which is just on reveal. If you play a card in this location next turn, plus three power, which is straight up Hawkeye. Yeah, you guys get it. It's Hawkeye. Hawkeye uh, doesn't use trick arrows. He just old uses, Hawkeye. Yeah, he's weaker Hawkeye. You'll see that in a moment too. No wait, this is hang on. This is current Hawkeye. Is he plus three? He used to be plus two. Plus... Then it was it right. He got buffed yes. to plus three. He used okay. to be worse. Now he's this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then we have plus grapple. Three. Which is the only one we got correct. After yeah. you play uh, your next card and move it to this location. Yep. So this is like at the 1-3 stat line, this one seems a little pushed. Like I actually really like this one. Yeah. And then the last one is the Pim Arrow, which is my least favorite. It's just an Ant-Man. Ongoing, if your side of this location is full, uh, it gets plus three. It's old Ant-Man. But this, Bad yeah, this Ant-Man. is the old Ant-Man. Yeah. Now... I think overall, the deck seems very interesting to put Kate into a bounce shell or something where, you know, you go Grandmaster off Kate to get extra arrows. Then you've got a whole quiver of trick arrows ready to go. Very yep. cheap, very affordable. Just and blowing up your hand size. Mockingbird. Exactly, because Mockingbird is going to be able to proc off these. Squatch is going to be able to proc off a lot of cheap plays. It just plays into everything that Bounce likes, though filling up their hand size to clog up returns is the only thing that potentially slows them down but it could mean that you actually build a bounce deck with fewer 
one costs and you have more big finishers and more tech cards because Kate will give you the cheaper cards that you're going to use as like your churn. So that, I, there's very cool things all around. I think she's going to be really fun. Yeah, uh, and she's actually like, she's not, we were talking about this last time. Will it be its own archetype? It seems like it will be Bounce or Zoo, which yeah. exist, but she is very much her own flavor. Like a Kate deck will always be named a Kate deck. You know. Right. I do wish we got like one more arrow to go up to five. Mm. Okay. Um, yeah. But does she have lore masters? Does she have another trick arrow that would be iconic enough to justify a card creation? Yeah, is there an no effect idea. you feel like she is missing? Let's see. So she has a goblin effect, a basic power buff effect. Gra- so, okay, here's the thing. Um, Pim arrow and basic arrow feel too similar. That's another thing I don't yeah. like. They're just both power spikes. Either one you play it, or the other one is like you fill it. Yeah, there's. I want a trick arrow that like helps my my friends. You know, like yeah. a, a support kind of arrow. Uh, you know, be cool. Like a, a forge effect. Um, did, did you ever play? You played Overwatch ever? Nah. So uh one of the characters was um uh i forgot his name so it was an h uh shot arrows right yep. and one this before he got reworked but originally one of those arrows was a sonar arrow or whatever where you oh. shot it at like a wall or something like that and then it kind of pulsated and it revealed enemies within a range nice. what if she had literally that arrow like a sonar arrow and it just yep. said next turn you see your opponent's plays like they're down. Oh, and it's like a like a three cost or something. Yeah, probably two or three. That'd be interesting. You can just make it a two two. You just make it daredevil. True, but then you can play it to see their last turn, which might be better than their fifth. Turn. I don't know. That'd be that would be fun having a, having a sonar arrow to be able to predict, or like a one turn. Um, ah, the card or, that forces your opponent forces your opponent to play to that location first. What if it's a one? And it's on reveal. Next yep. turn, see your opponent's first played card. So it still Boom. pauses, just like uh, Daredevil, and you, everything gets played. But the only thing that's highlighted and you can see is the first card. So if they play five cards, you only see one. Yep. I'm so in. a teeny bit of info. I love it. Next up, Marvel Boy. Oh my gosh. All right. Put the, put the Teddy stamp on it now. Cannot release in this state. Yeah, three, three. Now, I've said that a number of turn. times, my friends, and this keeps happening, yeah. but I'll keep putting the stamps down. This is obscene. A three, three. After each turn, give three of your one cost cards plus two power. Brad, what are they thinking? So, <laughs> when it says give three, what what is the wording yes. on Ironheart? Um, good question. I'll pull it up. You vamp. If it's up to, then that means it's possible uh, to still hit things underneath three. If she's not worded, if she is worded that way, this wording makes me think that give three of your one cost cards means if you don't have three, he doesn't do anything. Oh, really? No. So Ironheart is on reveal, give three of your other cards plus two power. Okay. So then he will still work. So I I didn't know if there was if it, if the word up to or the phrase up to was there. Yeah, it was it was a requirement yeah. kind of thing that it has to be three to do anything. Right. No, I think he'll just do as as many up to as so implied. Turn, in Marvel so Snap. I mean, he curves out perfectly though. Turn one, one drop. Turn two, mm-hmm. two one drops. Turn three, him lights out, baby. I mean, heck, turn five, man. If he hits if he hits three cards once, okay. He's a three nine. That's stupid. Yeah. So it's that funny because is... they keep trying to buff Zoo. Yeah. And it still won't work simply because of Killmonger's existence. You don't think it'll work now? This works. This this works. Now, are you saying okay, hang on. Are you saying that like there's gonna be another archetype that's not called Zoo that's gonna make better use of this? And be more yes. like meta successful. Okay. Yes. Hi Evo. Yeah. Because he's such like Marvel Boy just, is such an just outlier play, in Zoo. Sunspot, that... Nebula, and Misty yeah. and Hi Evo 
right he's played in there and it's like yeah just buff those while you're Kyra armor and it's gone yeah like you win right yeah he's just better in that kind of list Kyra, luke cage they can't shadow king you like here's the thing you could legitimately run the entire rest of the list be tech cards to protect these guys because yep. him as a battery is that powerful he's not ongoing ongoing hate doesn't stop him he the just only thing that's shutting him up is red guardian and he's a three power so there's a foreseeable way that you could protect him from even getting hit by red guardian like <laughs> he just happens it's nuts it's after each turn it could happen the same turn that you play him it's just like what are he's got to be more expensive or do less maybe like, he's good in thanos plus, yeah anything that plays once <laughs> or with with uh k bishop yes she plays once so. Does your deck have th- up to three one cost? Heck, if you have two one cost cards and he procs one time, he's three seven, and then he procs two times, and he's a three eleven. Like three eleven is what too much. What do you much. think of Shuri? To like she plays early tempo him and then sets up Shuri later for the end game. Mm-hmm. I like it because you already like to play Sunspot and stuff, and um, if you just play Ebony Nebula Maw, as well, zero. Titania. Yeah, like those things, and then you just kind yep. of like play Marvel Boy, and then that also makes uh, floating on five when you don't have a sunspot actually viable. Because let's say you have three thing, you have the max three right for Marvel Boy. Floating yeah. on five gives sunspot five power. Floating on five gives six plus power. Um, if you have the three other cards, or if you only have two, it's four. So you're pretty much almost you're al- almost matching the sunspot. While still being able to float and then do your, you know, Sherry on four, float on five, uh, you know, She Hulk, uh, Taskmaster, right? Yep. Like I said, cannot release in this state. We'll see. So they seem to be determined to let we a just bunch named of these a, cards through. We just named a lot of decks that aren't Zoo <laughs> that this is right. probably better in. Yeah. So, yeah. There's that. Now, okay. Hear us out. Wicked. Okay, Venom. Coming out next is going to be good in Zoo because Zoo is very efficient at its energy drop. Wiccan is a 4-5 on reveal if you spent all of your energy this game, plus 2 max energy. So this is as long as you didn't pass any energy up to the point of playing Wiccan, you're then going to go plus 2 max. So if you have, like, obviously Kitty helps fill in the cracks for a lot of decks, but... If you are really intelligent and honestly kind of aggressive in that early curve, um, you can get an enormous payout of plus two max and then roll into the big boys at the end. And a four or five is a solid body for this. Yeah, the four, the four or five that does something is feeling good. Dark, I hawk, like that. Dark, hawk, dark, hawk. Let's go. Just turn curve one Korg, out. turn two, like what? You could just do Grandmaster now, honestly. Yeah. Turn three Rock Slide, turn four Wiccan, turn five Dark yep. Hawk, plus another two cost, like a Shadow King to start mm-hmm. a whatever. Um, plus yeah. armor to protect him, plus whatever. Right. Like, yeah, you got a lot yeah. of power here. Um, potentially an enormous amount of energy as well. And this opens up like it's such a, a Pandora's box. Like if you go magic, like can you imagine how much extra energy is then coursing through your And this, game? this actually makes it so... In a Dark Hawk list, I actually won't mind going back to that classic Dark Hawk Doom finish because now you're going to want to run Grandmaster and have the ability to play Grandmaster and Doom together on six after you play a Wiccan is actually really solid. Yes, you can play a six cost with an on reveal plus Grandmaster and immediately repeat said on reveal in another lane. Yeah. As long as you got Wiccan down successfully. Like, it's, it's which I don't correct. I, okay, so. I, I really don't think this is hard. Um, this is no, a very easy it's... thing to me because like just good decks like to curve out. Play those. And I think yeah. Darkhawk is one of the best curve out decks in the game. Yeah, you probably want, if you really want to play through him, you're going to go a little more aggressively on the cheap side. But with all these other good, like cheaper cards, I think you can easily do it. Yes, what friend. I see, Brad, and what we have to talk about now is people are mm-hmm. going to say, oh, Quicksilver and Domino are good then, right? They get nope. a guaranteed one, I get a guaranteed two. Thank you. Because what Shut you're doing... Up. 
Quicksilver and Domino will allow you to hit the criteria of Wiccan more easily, but, but it makes will make it, it harder less to hit likely Wiccan. that you drew Wiccan himself yeah. uh, to then succeed on having paid off playing your, your curve out. So I still think that Quicksilver and Domino are going to be a trap. Please play cards that actually do something instead. Welcome to Can't Stop Snapping, the show where we are the most professional, consistent <laughs> Domino and Quicksilver haters H- in haters. all of Marvel Snap. Yeah, yeah. We're going to have to start creating like a, a character that comes out every time we mention Domino and Surfer and Quicksilver. Yeah. And then uh, Quicksilver, Quicksilver, I like that it's thematic though. People are sucked in. They want to play Uncle Quicksilver. Speed? No, no. Speed's the brother. Quicksilver's the uncle. Um, right? Am I crazy? You're asking, you're asking is Quicksilver, the wrong person. Hang on. Is Quicksilver only uh, Wanda's brother in the MCU, or is that canon? No, she he is. Um, yeah. And then these are Wanda's kids. Yeah. Lisa, so is Uncle, Qu- but, Uncle Quicksilver. We got there. Okay. Yeah. But uh, it escaped me for a moment. I was like, uh... uh oh, okay. I'm sorry. It's just... <laughs> I'm just also, rambling, man. Talk about speed. It's weird because, like... Magneto oh yeah, was their father, but he's not. And then Vision was. But then, if then... you look at Quicksilver and Magneto in the comics, they made them intentionally look exactly like one another because that storyline of Magneto being the father was canon until they retconned it by saying, "No, no, no, Haivo did the experiments and stuff, and they're just mutants." And it's like, yeah. Ah. Well, then you have the storyline where she has kids with Vision, and it's like a whole mess. And Nightcrawler is the other yes, one. Yes, and then Nightcrawler is an alternate. But to be fair, Nightcrawler, uh, that happened in like 2003. Yeah. In an alternate M- Marvel That one's thing. like established as being an alternate, but the House of M no, is yeah. like major canon. Right. House of M happened after that. It was 05. House of M was 05. Nightcrawler thing was 03 with, with uh, what's her name? Nocturne releasing it. All right. There we go. Look at Speed, that. Speed, baby. Is a three, three three ongoing plus one for each turn in which you spent all your energy. So Wiccan and Speed actually want to curve into one another. Exactly. Uh, the ongoing so. means that he has the memory, just like uh, Morbius. Mm-hmm. So you can play him at any point in the game and gain the benefit. I just feel like his upside is too short. I'm looking he's at just, like what Marvel a, Boys. He's a three nine. Well, if you did it every single turn, yes. Or oh, three ten with magic or a limbo game. True, true, true. Like, is that enough? No. Power creep is real, man. That we're looking at a three ten and saying like no, but I yeah, kind but of it's agree. a three ten that you have to like hit every single yep. time. And the thing is, like, if you hit Wiccan, then it's going to get hard to spend all your energy. Right. Like they like being right. in the same deck, but don't. As soon as Wiccan goes off, it makes speed way harder to be successful. You're, so it so think of it this way. Our rule of thumb for Red Hulk is two or three hits per game for Red Hulk, right? For those of yeah. like players that don't spend enough energy that turn. So yep. the same idea is you probably hitting three turns where you use all your energy, which means on average, speed is a three six. Yep. 3-7 if you're being a little more intentional and then 3-8 yeah. if you're uh, really on your game. So And you can just get a 3-7 or 3-8 with plenty of other cards. Sage. Yep. yep. So speed, I think, needs to be changed. You, you get the ongoing suite of synergies, but I'd just like to see a little more punch out of speed. Maybe, I mean, I always am a fan of lower base power, higher abilities. Um, what if... But- yeah. You actually wanted to play a deck that had nothing but like ones, twos, and three was like your top end. And turn four, yeah. you just play a two cost and havoc, and you said, All right, made this <laughs> way easier of myself. <laughs> three oh, nine. Man. I had a, yeah. I had a game where I got havoc down like it was towards the end of the game, but I played it on Sinister London and I totally forgot that they would both activate and both take my energy away. So then I'm like, I can't I don't like if you did that early. <laughs> two yeah. havocs you're like i have negative energy my man <laughs> i'll just sit here <laughs> it's like when you're playing and like expansion pops up and it gives you a havoc you're like yeah, all right just, i didn't want to play like this that. game anyway yeah so then if you played your own at the same time you're like all right hands off the keyboard i'll yep. come back uh there was um but it will not be good uh, please everybody do not take our yeah. ramblings as this is we're excited this is a meme 
Um, we All do right. have Emperor Hulkling. We have one more before oh, we yeah. go into the deep. Oh, yeah. He's deep, really cool. Deep data mine. He's a 6'11. He what does he do, Teddy? At the start of the game, you copy the text of a random six cost card. Now, I don't know if at the start of the game you're going to get an indi- like a visual of what he is or if you're going to have to draw him to know. I think know. you have to draw him. I would assume that you have to draw him. Um, like he, I, he, he pretty... might have like an on-screen like effect, like a Haivo Thanos thing, but it won't yeah. show you what he hits until you. That's that's my guess. We don't know for sure. The devs have surprised us before on this as well because we didn't think that Spider Ham was going to show people. But, yep. Um, because you know what is going to be obviously there's going to be times where you hit Destroyer and then you don't want to play him. But in the vast majority of games, you're going to know what he is as soon as he hits your hand, and then you can play around what that really awesome ability is going to be. Oftentimes, the six drops just have, you know, some icing on the cake, and his stat line is towards the top end of what they do. So, I mean, you can just easily imagine he hits Dr. Doom, a 611 Dr. Doom, yes, please. Uh, 611 Magneto, meh, but maybe that's still what you needed. Um, yeah. So it's just, it's pretty interesting. I think the stat line's going to be good Odin, enough. 611 Noel, eh? Uh, Six eleven. Yeah, no, that, uh, some of them goes pretty hard. Some of them go very hard. I am immediately um, drawn to mentioning Copycat, who is releasing the season before at a three five. And when you draw her, you steal the text of the bottom card of your opponent's deck. So she's also a card that's just a blank stat line that will then take on something a little less random, but um, is feeling thematic there. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I think it's. Gonna be a really cool card. I, I, it's also again, like you said, six eleven. More often than not, it's just gonna be solid, or just a right rate. as or as right a general finisher. I wonder if he needs to go taller though. I'm just thinking, man. Like, Ooh, what if he just, what if he becomes Red Hulk and you have him in your hand? Yes, he could just become Red Hulk <laughs> and start at the eleven power, which would be fantastic. Amazing. Uh, these next ones, we don't know when the season is and we don't know what these cards do, but we have a Madam Web season, which is weird. Great womp, tie-in, womp, guys, uh, for, yeah. the, uh, for the movie. Timely, timely. Uh, Second day is on top of their game. We are getting more spider people, and one that I'm most excited for is Symbiote Spider-Man getting their own card. So that cool. That is sick. Um, Scarlet Spider uh you know spider clone which means this must generate something does it make it, they it have to have some kind of tie-in now whether it is just a token generator which it very well could be it'd be fun if you get I, two of them like and they have a move effect on them where they're both like moving around like silk that would be sick hey we have not gotten a new token generator ever like like you, a, you like you brought this up before and, and, and it was like blatantly untrue what do you mean <laughs> We got we got Sentry. That doesn't count. Sentry does count. No, it's I'm talking. I'm, when I think of token generator, <laughs> would, no, no, this is a clone. Saying, this is a clone. Yeah. Sinister, Sinister clone. Yeah. yeah, or broodlings. I'm talking about that. Not yes. We haven't gotten one of those. We need more of those okay. for Patriot. Yep. All right, and then we got oh, Madam just Web. for Patriot. You really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I want I want more of these for Patriot. What if? And this is just like pure wish fulfillment. Would it? Does he ever get multiple clones, or is it not limited so. at one? Give him, give like, him twelve clones. What if every turn a new one swung, web swung into a new location? That'd be cool. Like swings that off of cool. him. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, and he's like a three or a four cost, so it just like plays out for the rest of the game. Right. Yeah, I'd okay. like it. Okay. Uh, and then, of course, you have Madam Web herself. Uh, funnily enough, these two have logos. This one doesn't yet, so that's fun. Um, yep, all work in progress. Can... I assume this is going to be the season after the Young Avengers, but it doesn't have to be. Can I ask? I mean, I know, like, Snap is already, like, doing, like, a lot of uh, deep cuts with characters. Like, look at Infinite has a total of, like, four issue appearances, something like that. Right. Um. Why does Madam Web have like a any fan following or whatever? Because like it, it's not just the movie. I, I genuinely like. I see a lot of people like look at like the original '90s Spider-Man movie, the animated one, and be like, "Oh, yeah. Madam Web's such a cool character. I want to see more of her." She has 
hardly any 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 appearances. She does not have any comics where she is the character. Like it's just she's such a weird character to me as far as like Spider Men go. Where like I just you could have gone with different ones in my opinion. I mean, but here's the thing: is she hits the vibe just right of the the spider matriarch, which is like very spidery and gothy. Also, so isn't she like in the comics not even an actual spider person? Kind of like how a Spider Woman isn't a spider person. Yeah, I think she's more adjacent in some of isn't the lore. Isn't she a mutant? I'm Maybe. pretty sure she's a mutant. I don't know much about. I didn't watch the movie. I haven't read the comics. Like, hopefully, I'm, her I'm card almost, is cool. Listen, man, I I, I I love that. You know, they made Infinite cool. They right, they yeah. can make Madam Web cool if they try really hard. I hope Brent Broad did something special. He was really he was watching that movie and like instead of paying attention, I hope he was designing Madam Web basically. <laughs> yeah, but Teddy, her mom Bad. died in Peru. While she was there exploring and uh, experimenting on spiders and oh, stuff. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's you brought I'm the energy upset. of the whole conversation down already. <laughs> I'm still upset that we didn't get that line in the movie. It was just in the trailer. Yeah. Have you seen the movie? No. The entirety of the villain's voice is 80 yard. The whole yeah. movie. Yeah. Every time the actor speaks, his mouth does not match at all. No. It's bad ADR. Like, they changed the dialogue. Right. They changed How, his lines. Yes. Was he just speaking a different language the entire film? Or like, yeah, we got it. No, he, I like it. He looks like when you go on Netflix and you accidentally selected the different language. And yeah. you're like, oh, my God, what is happening? Like, I like the idea better that there was an alternate script that some lip reader is going to eventually give us. That's yeah. somehow like way better. He was like supposed to be some kind of like sassy goofball. He had like comedy the, lines. No, in the there. old script was also pretty bad because the old script got oh, yeah. leaked years ago, yeah. and the oh, idea okay, okay. was um, uh, it's something about ba like pa baby Peter Parker was a way bigger portion of the old story. Oh, and, and a lot more. And like something Peter about Parker. like giving him poison or something. Like it was Poisoning really baby Peter Parker. Peter Parker who had no involvement with spiders or any of these people beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> I just, it was like a universal constant that he had to be involved with spider villains. Okay. I just want to say this. I would yeah. have rather taken and uh, instead of Madam Web, they should have just gone with that Aunt May spy thriller movie. Do you remember they, that in the leaks of the Sony have. emails? Yeah. Where it's like, they Aunt had May's. like a, like a, mm -hmm. like a 007, like James Bond type of like noir film set around Aunt May. I would have Amazing. much rather had that because that's yep. so funny. And Uncle Ben. Uh, uh. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, we got new ultimate variants. Uh, to the very large dismay of Teddy, uh, Jeff is an ultimate variant. Uh. It's okay. They're making me pay through the nose for Jeff. I might. If he has VFX, I might. Okay. You guys know uh, he was we'll my most played card last goes. season. They haven't yet given the ultimates the facelifts. Remember when they had that poll? They were talking about like. They had all these ideas. The, the roadmap. Yeah, then there was going to be mythics as well. There was going to be mythics. There was going to be like different colored animations, different voice lines and all this. Like It was like, yeah, that would actually make it worth paying maybe half as many tokens as right now. Um, but Jeff, I mean, he's got a certain allure. It's a little orca with the venom. Yeah. Uh, guys, instead of just hounding second dinner for stupid things, why don't you actually get on them and have your voice heard in regards to broken promises they've made with their roadmaps i'd rather Ooh. that hound them for the fact that ultimates are supposed to be reworked like last year and mythics supposed to be like introduced the beginning of this year we're in june also Second still dinner, rewriting still, the roadmap and then just publishing it and... where are my game modes right below scroll down no! my brother Roll down. We're going to be a little sneak peek. On oh, hold what on. We are hold on. almost. <laughs> oh, okay. Sure. You look like an idiot. It's uh, these. It's the new reactions. This uh, is your these. game mode. You got to play a match three ah. game now with the emotes. <laughs> yep. 
no. Uh, no. Cassandra's uh, worth knowing. She's missing from the spotlights now. Uh, her previous spotlight is now marked as promo, and they think it means one of four things. Special events uh, to give away mm, Cassandra to everyone. It's a Twitch drop, a milestone reward, or a login reward. So maybe we'll get a new card free of charge for everybody. Don't hold your breath, though. I doubt it. Yeah, right. <laughs> I think her previous spotlight marked promo just means now there's a special way to get her promo version and you still got to pay for the base version. We'll see though. Hang on. So do you think that there's going to be a different, like a promo variant or this is going to be, I think, or do you think it's just going to be like two keys for the price of her, one? Her variant just might be a conquest variant and they just marked it promo for something. Or oh, there is just yeah, yeah, like yeah. Or that variant is like something else. <laughs> uh like a like or a bundle or something like i don't know like it everything got thrown off because then arishem got pushed a month back and like yeah like some of the stuff with the well, caches is weird he's right now he's still releasing this month apparently oh no he's he's releasing the first week of july but, but that's this still season. the season the season yeah, is fine like, i don't like how the season eats into Ju- uh, july but you know that, that's how the calendar hits us all right teddy it's the clans we have the ui for clans you get to make your emblem you get to get a theme you get to enter the alliance this name is... The this is not the level? name that I voted on. What'd you vote on? What did they had like teams and they had it was, was it teams and alliances? It was teams, alliances, and clan. I believe was the other one. Oh, then maybe it but was. Team, okay. team was a was T dot E dot. It was yeah. like shield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like how it's an acronym. Um, I think I might have voted for that. <laughs> I like okay. alliances. I okay, Teddy. It's, I chose, it's fine. It's fine. I'm not. I did I'm not I, I know, but I didn't want team because it made me think of Microsoft Team. Like I was at work. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want that. And then clan just feels like generic. So alliances I like. Uh, this is cool. This looks like it's around the corner. If we already got the UI for it in the whatever, you have privacy. You can you invite only or open. I'm assuming. Um, you could limit by you know level. Uh, highest rank achieve you can you know have like only spikes and the best of the best in your in your alliance so yeah so uh, they are it's cool they're setting this up like all we have is this screenshot i'm almost certain yeah. that here over the weekend maybe you guys have already seen it the ign announcement is going to give us more information on what this is going to be um and like just from this they're showing that they're going to have an element of competitiveness a certain level of try hard that you can achieve by putting these restrictions on who can apply to enter. Um, but also we know that no inter-clan competition is planned until the next rollout. Um, so we don't know how far that's going to be. But as far as we understand, is this first run of releasing alliances is going to be like very bare bones. So don't I get your hopes still, up too high. I'm still optimistic that this is not a game mode. This is not. Okay. Brad, this will you not were just count talking about broken promises. Why do you think you're going to get game modes plural anymore? It's going to be leagues and teams, okay? And bot invasion and high stakes tables. And it's just going to be little little tweaks on what's already in the game, mate. Well, it's if best. that happens, this is what uh, second dinner is going to look like afterwards. Okay, we're going to cut that. There was no <laughs> violence uh, implied to any of our friends. Please do not. Dinner. Please do not attack Second Dinner's place of building. I just saw thousand. Destroyed, the mansion. destroyed Mansion. Destroyed uh, Mansion. Add a rock here and a vibranium to your hand. Fun. I, I don't understand the significance of the vibranium. So you can play it. Yeah, but that doesn't make sense flavorfully. Why you would have gotten it from the Destroyed Mansion? Yeah, it doesn't seem super thematic, does it? Right. I, I thought it would just be you get a rock here and then a rock in your hand. <laughs> as just I but rock. i think i guess they looked at it and they're like that i guarantee you the original was that you get a rock yeah. here and you get a rock in your hand and everyone was like oh they're gonna hate this location yeah. they're gonna hate it let's give them a vibranium so it's a little like or right. just want to make another token why don't so let's you, just use vibranium let's make another token let's make another token why not chimichangas anybody yeah they're making a chimichanga they have no excuse uh fill this location uh fill it Fill this to give your cards at the other locations plus one power. So it's a blue marvel effect at the cost of filling. I like the I sure. like the benefits versus cost of filling trade off. So many cards right now are very dynamic and movable, so it's it's pretty fun. Gives you that early tempo rush. These are and cool there we are. Was variants. I like this Captain America. 
pretty sick and now maybe playable. I don't know. This new Captain America hasn't hit the way I really wanted him to. All right, spotlights. Let's get through these real quick. July 2nd, the last week of the season, Arsham is when he releases. Dude, it becomes a must buy because of Arsham. Yeah. Uh, fantastic. Uh, these are, you got to buff Hercules. Make him a three cost, please. Oh, please. That's Something. it. Uh, Black Swan. <laughs> Seven. Can you imagine? Still unplayable. That's, yeah. Uh, Hydra Bob with Nebula Galactus. He's the um, skip of my life. Yep. I don't like these variants, so. I don't, yeah, like, if you don't have Nebula, she's the best one out of the bunch, but you don't want to open for these just because of Nebula. I Unironically, I like the Hydra Bob variant the most out mm-hmm. of these. Yeah, but it doesn't seem super playable. Nope. Ajax, for those of you who don't remember, ongoing plus one power for each card in play affected with negative power, and he's a 4-4. So uh, this is actually a pretty good one to open for, I think, because... I- Dark uh, Dark Hawks are going to get Beta Rebels are going to get, uh, fine, and then yeah. this seems like a very playable card. Yeah, Ajax is the one that seems the most interesting. If you like playing any of those Affliction Turn decks, and go six for it. Has and if you don't Ajax. have Hawk, if you don't have Hawk, he's still very solid. So, yep. Uh, Copycat, you were alluding to them earlier. Uh, three five. When you draw this, steal the text from the bottom card of your opponent's deck. You can also get Thanos and Cold Obsidian. This is just a yeah, good week that. because of Thanos. Thanos will be reworked by then again, so uh, <laughs> it'll probably be better. Copycat seems super fun in Mill, um, mm-hmm. and because I like yep. Mill, I'm going to love going in on this. If you don't care about Mill, and if you don't care about Thanos, again, super easy skip because Call is just like a subsidiary of Thanos. Really interesting that we're getting a very short season. Uh, so is this only a three-week season? Well, this is where Cassandra is supposed to hop in to the Proxima Hope. Um, and Gwenpool is oh, the, you're the right. um she's not in the, there. the title card. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so they're they're going into the first week again. Okay, I see. Uh then we go into Marvel Boy. Uh have to buy Marvel Boy. If if Marvel Boy is even close to what he is, you have to buy every single one of these to get Marvel Boy. And on top of that, you're getting two really good six drops. I still think Blob is actually better than people think. I'm surprised um, that Renslayer hasn't brought him back, but Yeah. Uh it's just People sleep on Blob, and then Red Hulk's still very good. Yeah. Wiccan has Loki and Pixie. Oh, Having good. Loki means yes, you get this week, I think. Uh, most you really hate Loki for some reason, which I could see it. Uh, Speed with uh, Jeff. Hi, Jeff Iron Lad. So... Uh, this is also a very good week. This is a must open a, because a of the Hi, Jeff Iron Lad. Yeah, you get a bet. This is like what we thought the Sage Week was going to be. Uh, I kind of yeah. weak card, but good good opens. Uh, but I actually think Jeff, Speed Jeff is pretty, very important. Yeah, yeah, I do think Speed's pretty bad, though. Uh, yes. And in this one, if we don't get any changes to this Professor X list for some reason, all the way in late August, this <laughs> Cannonball opening is going to be great. If you, if you miss Cannonball, and if he's in the same state, you have to buy him. Yeah. And then a bunch of new but variants. If, so say he gets balanced. Say he gets balanced. How is Emperor Hulkling looking leading the, the pack? Good. Good. Yeah. I think it looks like a good six drop. I have a, I have a cool way of thinking about this. We'll do it only for this one. Um, and okay. maybe we'll alter how we do our rankings um, in the future. How many keys, like value, would you give each guy here? Ah. So it's like, and then if you add them all together, is it like worth going all in on? So Cannonball, obviously, right now, I, I consider a four-key card. I, I consider this, like, I would go all in on the cash just for Cannonball. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. If we, pick, if we picked, like, the Speed Jeff Iron... Well, what's, what's one that's, like, more more intriguing? I guess the Wiccan Loki Pixie. You don't like Pixie, so you'd probably give zero keys to Pixie. You like Loki. you probably give, like, two keys to Loki. And then how high are you on Wiccan? Um, Is he a... I mean, I, I kind of have to put the whole, like, keep everything in whole. I think this is a two or three key week because, like, you're hoping to snag Wiccan and Loki in the first few keys. If you miss Pixie, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Um, yeah. But if you get all three and three keys and you dodge a variant or the the random card, that's also solid. I think it's a good week to kind of try to do that. All right. In the future, maybe we'll bring in like a, a key ranking. I don't know. We have to find a, a clean way to communicate the the value. I think you have to rank the week for how many keys, not for 
each card, you know? Interesting. Because, yeah, well, well, we'll see how it plays out. And what's like if one, if it. one card is worth four keys, then it just makes the week of four key week. Right. Because yeah, then, yeah. Well, then so like, there's no reason to, it's like, if you look at Loki, say it's a four key card, then it yeah. doesn't matter what you think Wiccan and Pixie are, because now well, you're just saying, I just want to get these. Exactly. You're going to go all in just because of the headline of, of that card. Yeah. But yeah. I think there's a way we can iron it out. All right. All right, Teddy, we did it. Are you excited for the next couple of months? Dude, data mines are always so much fun, especially when they yeah. look like uh, Marvel Boy. <laughs> yeah, they do look really cool. I'm excited. Uh, I, so I, I love the idea of Marvel Boy. I've wanted something that's like spitting out the buffs consistently per turn. I just think he's super pushed. <laughs> we'll see. Maybe the fact that he only affects one drops could bring him back in line a little bit. Maybe it um, does. And you just play Electro Killmonger in every deck. There you go. Hey, you could play Electra with your own Marvel Boy. Yeah. Hooray. Electra, Electra. All go. right. Go to patreon.com slash can't stop snapping and see these live and early. You can also go to youtube.com slash can't stop snapping and see the bonus content, all that good stuff. We love you. We appreciate you. You're the best. Please like, subscribe. Let us know down below which cards you're most excited for. Looking forward to. And Teddy. Till next time. Don't stop snapping. Bye, everybody. Can't Stop Snapping is a podcast hosted and produced by Brad Saffer and Teddy Ninja, originally created by Michael Thurman.